I got fired last year in Las Vegas from the Frontier Hotel for saying shit in a town where the big game is called crap. <laughs> it's some kind of a double standard, you know? I'm sure there was some Texan standing out in the casino yelling, Oh, shit, I crap! <laughs> They fly those guys in free, you know? <laughs> Fired me. Shit. You get as much trouble saying shit as you can smoking it down there. <laughs> Shit's a nice word. It's a friendly, happy, you know, kind of word. Handy word. Middle class has never really been into shit, you know, as a word. <laughs> No, not really comfortably, not completely into it, you know, not really relaxed with it. You'll hear it around the kitchen if someone drops a casserole, you know. Oh, shit! Oh! Oh, look at the noodles! Oh, shit! Don't say that, Johnny, just hear it. Oh, shit. Sometimes they say, shoot. But they can't kid me, man. Shoot is shit with two O's. No one ever uses the word shit really literally, you know? It's always figurative speech. Hey, get that shit out of here, will you? Just move that shit away. I don't want to hear that shit. Give me that shit. I don't have to take that shit. I'm not full. You're full of shit. Some kind of shithead or something? I don't need that shit. It's always figurative. You never hear anyone say, Look at the shit, Martha. Wow. <laughs> Piles of shit in the street, wow. They don't say that, they have other words for that. Doo-doo, caca, poo-poo. <laughs> and good old number two. <laughs> Could never figure that one out, man. How did they arrive at that? Not all the numbers, too, gotta mean shit. <laughs> Why didn't they pick 13? You know? They didn't like that one anyway. That'd be easy to remember. 13 means shit and bad luck, right? I got it. My dog does number five. That's three ones and a two. Your dog does that, right? Dogs do a lot of number ones, man. They really do. They hold that and they, they spread it out all over town if they can. Because they know if they do one all at once, you take them right up the house again. They, they save one. <laughs> little ear. <laughs> little ear. <man. laughs> yeah, yeah. They can do 20, 25 number ones. And, uh, I told my little girl, you know, that our dog did number five. I said, hey, Bogey did number five, you know, three ones and a two. Ah, she thought that was great. She kept running back for an hour, man, telling me different combinations, right? Hey, did 21, 10 twos and a one. Ah. <laughs> Kids are like that. They love a joke, man. They really run with it forever. Just 4,000 variations on a theme. Hey, another aspect of the word shit. <laughs> to the drug community... A nice term. Sounds, uh, what is Time Magazine calling it this week? Drug culture? Mini culture? Micro culture? Whatever they mean. They have a million hyphens over there at Time Incorporated. Throw them around. Uh, yeah, to the doper, shit means something very special. Shit means shit. <laughs> yeah, whatever you smoke, drop, shoot, snort, rub into your belly or whatever is your shit. Especially grass, most often referred to as shit. Yeah. Got any shit? No, I'm out of shit, man. <laughs> Why don't you lend me some shit? <laughs> you already owe me some shit. <laughs> I wonder if one narcotics policeman, I call him narcotics policeman because I don't like the word narc. It sounds too final, you know? Narc. <laughs> sounds like it's over. Narcotics policeman sounds like you might have a chance of talking him out of it, you know? Good luck. But I wonder if one narc could go all the way through school and not know that shit means shit. <laughs> he might. Sure be in for a lot of surprises first day on the job, though. Some guy would roll up to him. Hey, you want to buy some shit? <laughs> 
Well, I never thought about it, really. <laughs> Where'd you get the shim? You know, try to draw him out, find out the identity of Mr. Big, right? Well, we brought it back from Cambodia in a guitar, man, and we um, made brownies out of some of it and gave some away as a wedding present, and we're selling the rest, man. Uh, hmm, sounds like some sort of a religious cult. How much is the shit? I'll let you have two ounces for $90, man. Must be good shit. <laughs> yeah, it is, man. Think you want some papers with that? <laughs> yeah, it's better let me have a roll or two, would you? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, shit. One of the things that occurred when I began to uh, just, you know, feel some changes happening to me, uh, and actually I was kind of still entertaining uh, in gin joints, you know. I mean, I realize they sell gin here, but it's really not the same as as middle-class nightclubs where I spent like a lot of years. And uh, it was weird to start having hair and start having a beard and to come out, you know, to all these folks, a lot of Shriners and uh, hookers and uh, salesmen, which are the same as hookers, really. <laughs> get right down to it. Uh, it was just strange. I had to find ways to break the ice. I mean, uh, I told them a poem. I told them about my hair. I'm aware some stare at my hair. In fact, to be fair, some really despair of my hair. But I don't care, because they're not aware, nor are they debonair. In fact, they're just square. <laughs> they see hair down to there, say beware, and go off on a tear. I say, no fair. A head that's bare is really nowhere. So be like a bear. Be fair with your hair. Show what you care. Wear it to there. Or to there. Or to there, if you dare. My wife bought some hair at a fair to use as a spare. <laughs> Did I care? Au contraire. <laughs> spare hair is fair. In fact, hair can be rare. Fred Astaire got no hair, nor does a chair, nor a chocolate eclair. And where is the hair on a pair? Nowhere, mon frere. <laughs> now that I've shared this affair of the hair, I think I'll repair to my lair and use an air. Do you care? <laughs> Here's my beard, ain't it weird? Don't be scared, just a beard. That's the thing, the word beard shook a lot of people up. Beard. It's not American sounding. Beard. Lennon had a beard. Gabby Hayes had whiskers. Monty Woolley had whiskers. Yeah. Well, anyway, I mentioned hair because I've only had extra hair for about a year now, and... Uh, Actually, it's the same hair I always had. Just used to be on the inside. <laughs> I'm wearing it in a new location, that's all. And I found there are some advantages to longer hair. For one thing, it covers the pimples on your neck. <laughs> one of the disadvantages of longer hair, a lot of people think you're a commie fag junkie. <laughs> well, it's tough to talk about the three things at once, you know? What would a commie fag junkie sound like, anyway? Where does the world unite? <laughs> How many did not wear a good strong deodorant tonight? Don't raise your hands, no. <laughs> Five day deodorant pads would have to be the strangest product yet to emerge from the business mind. Five day deodorant pads. Sounds like a curse of some kind. Let's right? <laughs> tell the truth, now be honest. When you first heard of five day deodorant pads, how many of you thought you had to wear them? <laughs> I always catch a few. <laughs> Two years I wore those mothers. <laughs> a lot of laughs at the beach, you know. Hey, hey, look at the goofy guy. He's got things under his arms. Scope. Has anyone here ever received a bottle of scope? Has anyone here ever sent anyone a bottle of scope? It just seems like such a cruel thing, you know? I often think of the borderline psychotic. It just needs one more thing to go wrong, you know? 
going down to the mailbox. Mm -hmm. What's this? Scope, scope. Ah! 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 Up on the roof with the magnum red. Nine dead, and they blame marine training. Uh, bad breath, yeah. Anyone can have bad breath, Marge, but you could knock a buzzard off a shit wagon. Remember that? If you ever run out of deodorant, I never mentioned that. You can, you do, even in the nicest home. You get one pit done, you know, and oh, God. I, you gotta go like that, you know. Hey. If you run out of deodorant, go into the kitchen and put a bay leaf under each arm. Doesn't stop you from perspiring, but you smell like soup. Keeps your friends alert, you know. Hey, who's wearing chicken vegetable? <laughs> Not me, I have been with bacon. <laughs> From the Campbell's Hardy Soups. A manhandler. <laughs> they call him, Frankie Lane sings about it. How do you handle a hungry man? A manhandler. Really sounds a little suggestive to me. Right? <laughs> There's a lot of that in advertising. Hidden sex, you know? There's a lot of open sex, too. Take it off. Take it all off. Does she or doesn't she? Hope so. Hmm? <laughs> but that's open, and you can deal with that. You know. I worry about the subliminal message. It's what's up front that counts. Should a gentleman offer a lady a tipperillo? And what's the big scene in the tipperillo commercial? There's a train going into a tunnel, man. <laughs> you don't have to be Fellini to figure that out. <laughs> But not all of the sex in those commercials is wholesome, normal, good old-fashioned American, man on top, get it over with quick. Sometimes it's bizarre. I'd walk a mile for a camel. <laughs> But wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? <laughs> I can get my hands on a Toyota. Well, they say Plymouth makes it. Let's make it with Toyotas. And the cigarettes are obscene, Doral. Taste me, taste me. <laughs> three, years, three years ago, eat me was a bad word. You couldn't say it on television. Now they got... Male models running around singing it. Taste me, taste me. <laughs> Winston, me and my Winston, we got a real good thing. <laughs> what are they doing with those cigarettes? <laughs> Half a pack is gone, they haven't lit one up yet. They're putting them somewhere, by God. <laughs> the lark, show us your lark. Nice invitation to a flasher, huh? Well, try that lark thing in the Bowery. Those guys will show you their larks. You know? <laughs> and then the, uh, the filthiest slogan of all. It's not how long you make it, it's how you make it long. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's based in truth, so it's easy to take. You know? Um, ta -da! I was on a talk show recently, and the uh, host asked me, said, what do you think about the dope problem? And I said, definitely, I feel we have too many dopes. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, uh, <laughs> no question about it. Uh, that's why we have a drug problem, I really feel, you know, because, like, everybody has access to drugs, and we're all kind of just dopey, you know, we're just human beings, little protoplasm walking around, shaking hands, how are you, Phil, give me a piece of lettuce, you know. <laughs> no real big thing, we're just kind of dopey folks, and we have all these drugs available to us. You know, that's why there's a drug problem, man. There's all those drug stores, right? Every three or four blocks, there's a big sign. Drugs. <laughs> Open all night. Drugs. <laughs> we deliver. Drugs. <laughs> Cut rate. Drugs. It's the biggest thing on their sign. Cosmetics, sundries. Drugs. 
And the pharmacist is always stoned. You ever notice that? <laughs> Check his eyes. He's experimenting with something. There. <laughs> How come he can never fill a prescription right away, you know? Really, he always gives you that, better come back in about an hour. Man. I can't even read the bastard, you know? It's no accident that we're drug-oriented, really. Uh, the drug companies got us that way, and they'd like to keep us that way. I mean, that's a simple thing. They start you early with the oral habit. A little orange-flavored aspirin for children. Two in the mouth, son. Something wrong with your head? Two in the mouth. Remember that? Head, mouth. These are orange. There'll be other colors later on. <laughs> Even named it after a saint to throw you off, you know? <laughs> It's all right, son. Two in the mouth. St. Joseph. <laughs> Remember Papa Chucks? Papa Chuck! <laughs> oh, you know. Guy goes to a dance when he's 13. How's your head? Two in the mouth, man, you know. Mom's got her fix. Coffee freaks running around. Alcohol. You know, that's the biggest, of course, and most abused. And incredible. 50% of all traffic deaths, no, yes, that's about 25,000, right. 50% of traffic deaths, 40% of all arrests, traceable, 50% of all first admissions to mental institutions, traceable to alcohol. And then, of course, there's uh, diabetes, gout, high blood pressure, heart disease, insanity, divorce. So I always say, drink up, Shriners, whenever I see a couple of them, you know. <laughs> When they talk about drugs, they don't talk about all of them. That's the problem. They don't mention coffee. <laughs> the low end of the speed spectrum, I grant you. But there are coffee freaks. And they're walking around, nobody, you know, worried about it or anything. Mrs. Olson never tells you about that mild speed lift, you know. Because she, she's shooting freeze-dried Folgers, right? <laughs> but you've seen the coffee freak in the office, haven't you? The guy who drops eight or nine cups every morning. And always in a good mood. Hi, how are you? Warm that up for you? Okay, yeah, hi, how are you? Hey, good to see you. Always in a nice mood, fine. Until the coffee urn breaks, man. Then he's the first cat over. What do you mean broken, man? Well, plug it in, man. Turn it around, never mind, man. Put some water in. Holy shit, man. Turn the plug around. Well, man. And then he goes out and scores, because he's the one who's hooked on. I know it's just a dopey example, but that's the beginning of it. Then you have housewives and the diet pills. Mom found out there's a lot more than dieting in those pills, man. Help you grind your teeth and feel great, too. <laughs> Keep it on the phone a lot. Hi, how are you, Marge? Anyway, look at the phone. Where are you going, Mom? Shopping at midnight? Well, they're open, you know. Never mind. I'll see you later, man. <laughs> and athletes? Athletes got into uppers? College athletes? The right wing's last line of defense on campus? And they're doing amphetamines. Remember when being up for the game used to be kind of a spiritual thing? <laughs> now, man, you up for the game? Been up all week, man. <laughs> Birth control pills. That's part of the drug scene, isn't it? You'd have to count them. The entire female population of the U.S. is being used as the guinea pigs to find out if birth control pills are going to have any side effects or not. Isn't that nice? Really, if every lady who used them gets to 61 and one leg gets shorter than the other one, you know, you know. Yeah. better call the pills back. Birth control pills uh, are still on prescription. You still need a note to get laid, you know. So bad. Not only do you need a note, you've got to go to one guy to get the note, and then you've got to bring it to another guy. You know? Everybody's in on it, you know. Ladies must feel silly going in there. Here's my note. <laughs> oh. oh, that's what you're doing at home, eh? Well, we're uh, keeping a record of it here in the store. And late at night, I read them. <laughs> well, someday birth control pills will come off prescription. And uh, when they do, they'll need those cute little catchy names that the patent medicines have. 
They'll sell birth control pills, you know, in the corner drugstore. There'll be one-cent sales at Rexall. There'll be attractive little cartons, merchandising campaigns, a special Christmas package, and uh, they'll be right up there with the Shraff's two-cent mints at the cash register, you know. <laughs> Take your change in birth control. And they'll need those cute little names, names which describe what the product does, names like, well, we have so many patent medicines today, Sleep Ease, No Dose, Dentu Grip, Aura Fix. <laughs> Sounds a little freaky, that one, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, may I have an Aura Fix? <laughs> Not without a note, hell no. <laughs> Someday birth control pills will need names like Pregnot. <laughs> Doctors prefer Embryno. <laughs> Here's one for the ladies. Nary a carry. <laughs> Something lofty and poetic. Nay, family way. <laughs> Something earthy and crude. Mom bomb. <laughs> Something for the youngsters. Junior miss. <laughs> Here's a real man's product. Inconceivable. <laughs> Mommy not, fetus fail, kitty kill, papa stopper, whatever you want. <laughs> Womb broom, Humpty Dumpty, you know. They're clever guys. I wouldn't be surprised if they come up with a birth control pill that doesn't work all the time. We call it Baby Maybe. <laughs> Available in the six pack, the sex pack, and the handy shack pack for you weekenders. <laughs> One for home, one for office, and one for the glove compartment, guys. And don't forget to save those wrappers. <laughs> Remember that? You always save 60 wrappers and get some azalea seeds. <laughs> Here's a phone call that'll never take place. A common phone call that will uh, never occur again once birth control is universal. Once everyone has a way to plan... No bachelor will ever have to fear this phone call again. And they fear it. So do married men. It's a scary call if you're fertile at all. <laughs> Hello. Hello? Dave? Yeah, this is Dave. Who is it? This is Jane. Jane? Jane who? Jane. Jane, Jane? Jane, you met me at a party about six to eight weeks ago and you said I was a real good sport. Hmm. Oh, Christ, yeah. Jane, how are you, Jane? Pregnant. And I'm going to jump out the window. Say, you are a good sport, aren't you, Jane? <laughs> It is a male sexist pig joke, really. Hey, uh, you know what I mean? I wanted to thank you very much. No kidding. Hey, thanks for being here, man. And, um, and thanks for the use of your head on an early show like this. I appreciate it. Don't forget, it takes two fingers to make the peace sign, just like it takes two people to make love. When you go like this, you're jerking off. Good night. <laughs> I was a disc jockey when I was 19. I was lucky. I found a job, like, you know, when I should have been uh, still learning about it. And uh, it inspired wonderful wino and Willie West, a character of mine. Radio stations, of course, change personnel rather rapidly. Willie West is no longer at wonderful wino. He's been replaced by Scott Lame. Hi, gang! Scott Lame here! The boss jock with the boss sounds from the boss list of the boss 30 that my boss told me to play. <laughs> Right here on the Nifty 850. <laughs> Wonderful Wino Radio. <laughs> Wonderful Wino. The big sound in the big town. Wino time, bing bong. Five minutes past the big hour at five o'clock. Hey, we can start at one of the big sounds this week. Number five. Number five, number five, number five, number five, number five. Last week was number nine. Number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine. Moved up four spaces, four spaces, four spaces, four spaces, four spaces, four spaces. Four spaces. <laughs> Here it is, 
one of the new super groups, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young, Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Sacco, and Vanzetti. <laughs> and the ever-present footprints cross the shadows on the carpets of the hallways of the memories of your mind. Okay, kids, one of the big sounds and a great story behind that one. And you heard it first right here on Wonderful Wino. Wonderful Wino. Why no time? Bing bong. Five minutes past the big hour of five o'clock. Moving along with two in a row. A big double play. Back to back sounds for you on the Scott Lane get together on a wonderful Wednesday. Here's a tune that's really moving fast. When I say fast, it was recorded at nine o'clock this morning. <laughs> at 12 noon, it was number 15. At three o'clock, it was the number one sound in town. And now it's a golden oldie. <laughs> Solid gold to make you feel old. Solid gold to make you feel old. A golden flashback from the summer of 69, before you were born, remember kids? Here they are, the red, white, and blue electric outdoor Protestant blues band. Jenny. We. Jenny. Okay. Okay, it's always good to get into some super gold. Super gold. Okay, we'll take about five minutes out here for the latest news from around the world from the award winning Wino Newsroom. And then back with more of the big sounds for you here on the Scott Lane Get Together for one of the Wednesday afternoon. Why no time? Ping pong. Five minutes past the big hour of five o'clock. As <laughs> soon as we come back, we'll be listening on medical records. Won't you take my heart by the donors? And my body is rejecting your heart by the recipients. But first, why no news? Why no news? Why no From around the world, across the nation, and up your street, here it is, Wino News, with Wino Newsman, Bill Peeper. Saigon! Phnom Penh! Bangkok. That's it from Wino News. Details on the half hour. Okay, kids, and back with more of the big sounds for you here. Wino time. Bing bong. Five minutes past the big hour of five o'clock. Right here on Wonderful Wino. Wonderful Wino. More hits more often. Big number seven this week. Number seven, number seven, number seven, number seven, number seven, number seven. This is one of the great bands from San Francisco. Brain Damage. <laughs> And a tune that's uh, really making it for them. In fact, it's number three, number three, number three, number three, number three, number three. That's right, it moved up four spots while I was talking about it. Here it is. <laughs> okay, one of the big sounds that you heard right here. A wonderful wino, wonderful wino. Wino time, ping pong, five minutes past the big hour at five o'clock. And say, stick around following the show. Kids will be featuring some local basketball. Local basketball. <laughs> Today, Andy Granatelli Vocational plays... Um, the mighty purple of Owsley High. One of the big games to it. Okay, let's move back with more of the big sounds. Billy and the Blemishes and One Last Pimple. I got one last pimple from going steady with you. Don't know whether to break it or leave it alone. It's the only one I call my own. Hey, don't forget, kids, if you have a problem like that, yes, if you're the only one in the crowd who doesn't have unsightly blemishes, pick up on Pimple On. Now you can put them anywhere you want. Put them all on one side of your face and look the other way. Put a peace sign on your forehead. 
Spell out your girlfriend's name on your bag. Hey, coming up during the next hour here on the uh, Scott Lame Show, we'll be listening to the new John Lennon single, which, if you play it backwards at slow speed, it screws up your needle. <laughs> And don't forget, the Associated Press tells us that 218 people have been killed on the nation's highways. The National Safety Council expects a total of 500. You're not trying, friends. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You. Now there are a lot of couples shows. There's... Uh, Dating game, newlywed game, family game, baby game. They don't have divorce game. You've seen the shows, bunch of couples sitting around giggling. Hmm? Ask them dopey questions. Do you have any pet names? Yes, Godzilla. <laughs> and they always try to get him into a little fight, especially on newlywed game. If her answer doesn't match his answer when he comes out. They make him fight a little, you know. What do you mean, chocolate? Chocolate, Jesus, chocolate. Pistachio, man. He says chocolate, you know. You're not getting any tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see Divorce Game. I think it's realistic. It's the one part of the male-female relationship they haven't capitalized on. I mean, they have Divorce Court on TV. Why not Divorce Game? Face it, it should be a positive thing, not, not an ending of something. It's two people beginning new lives, you know? Give them appropriate prizes. Give them dance lessons and wardrobe, singles weekend, cosmetic surgery, whatever seems appropriate, you know? Get them going right. Welcome to Divorce Game, brought to you by National Van Line. <laughs> yes, sir. If you're breaking up a home, let National break it up for you. And now, here's America's favorite divorce funny man, a fellow with a split personality, Don Decree. Love's more comfortable the second time around. Thank you, Don Pardo, and hi out there, everyone. <laughs> Find another nice house today. Welcome to Divorce Game, the show where some lucky couple actually wins a legal divorce right on the air and spends an exciting week together here in Hollywood as our guest at the fabulous Veterans Hospital. <laughs> and a little later on, we'll be playing our home divorce game. That's where we call a housewife at random and tell her her husband is downtown drinking with another woman. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. That'll be lots of fun, but we'll be doing that a little bit later on in our show. Right now, it's time to meet a couple from yesterday, Raul and Congolia Breckenridge. <laughs> been married 16 years and really can't stand one another. He's a pearl diver from Yuma and been out of work for some time now. His hobbies are lighting fires and helping the poor. Her hobbies, collecting foreign tennis balls and knitting humorous cummerbunds. And together they make napalm at home for a local right-wing group. Wonderful couple, and uh, they chose category number four, mental cruelty. Okay, ladies, cool it. I know that's your favorite, mental cruelty. <laughs> and yesterday, you awarded them a divorce right here on our stage. And now it's time to determine the custody of their children. <laughs> we'll spin the big custody wheel. And we'll find out who gets who. Congolia, what are the ages of your children? Well, we have triplets, six, five, and one. <laughs> Okay, let's spin the big custody wheel and find out how many she'll get to keep. <laughs> None! You don't keep any. Mr. Breckenridge gets all the children. How do you feel about that, Mr. Breckenridge? Uh, do you think we could let her spin that wheel one more time? <laughs> no, the decision of the wheel is final, and now it's alimony time! Okay, cool it, ladies. Alimony time. <laughs> yes, sir. And as you know, we like to be just as fair as the courts in awarding alimony, and so we use the alimony dartboard. <laughs> Congolia will throw three darts to determine her weekly alimony. Oh, yeah. <laughs> $1,550 a week. That's a new divorce game record. <laughs> And I recall from Mr. Breckenridge's card, he only makes $1,500 a year. 
Well, we'll see him soon on our new nighttime show, Jail Game. <laughs> Stay tuned for Sue Your Neighbor. And you bet your parents. <laughs> Ed Sullivan. Everyone does Ed Sullivan now. Even agents can do Ed Sullivan. I'm sure that somewhere in the world is a goddamn bear. That can, <laughs> just from being on the show, you know. And, uh, watching Ed from the wings, you know, you pick it up. Now, I know that a lot of guys do Ed Sullivan on kind of an amateur basis, and I'm here to help. It's, you know, kind of replace the lampshade for men at parties. Now, dig it. When you do your Ed Sullivan impression, when you do your Ed Sullivan, don't worry about the voice or the mannerisms. Just the acts you introduce. The stranger, the freakier the acts are, the better your Ed Sullivan will be. I'll now start my Ed Sullivan. I do the John Biner Ed Sullivan, by the way. Many of the comics prefer the Will Jordan. But the John Biner Ed Sullivan is cued for my ear by saying the phrase, well, now you know. But I know. But I know right here in our show. But I know. I'll get him. But I know. But I know right here in our show. But I know just after Connie Francis, for her tribute to Carmen Basilio. <laughs> And immediately following, or just following, the waltzing mice, the Maori fire eaters, and just before, now is that just before or just after? During the aerial photographs of Kate Smith, the entire female population of Guadalajara will run out on our stage and yell out their brassiere sizes. <laughs> now in our audience tonight, and I know sitting out there in our audience, where are you now? Here you are. <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> that's all that's really here. That's really here. He swam all the way from Scotland. I also in our audience. Now where are you? Here you are. The world's largest nun. <laughs> Don't stand up, sister. <laughs> but now you know, but now you know next week on our show, the Bronze Age. <laughs> An excerpt from the Protestant Reformation. <laughs> what would be the ultimate Ed Sullivan act? It would have to be... It would have to be everything that has occurred since eternity. <laughs> or maybe how about Ed just staring back at you for an hour? How are you? I'd like to see them one time. Well, it's over now. No one got a chance to thank Ed either, man. You dig that? The last one that they taped, they didn't know it was going to be the last one because they were due to go into reruns the next week. And then it was canceled after it was in reruns. So at the actual last show after 23 years, nobody really, you know, knew the vibes they were into. What a shame. I would like to have been there just to say, thanks, Ed. No kidding, man. Thanks for all them crazy acts and everything in all those years. Wow. Thanks for the Beatles, Ed. Ed made sure we got them, man. And Elvis? Yeah. Little maudlin gang, but thanks, Ed. Da -da -da. <laughs> oh, yeah. Daytime television. Now, guys don't watch too much. I realize the guys aren't into daytime TV. Most of the ladies in an audience like this don't watch either. But if anyone watches, it is mostly women. There's a lot of women-oriented shows. There's a lot of uh, pain, man. There's a lot of pain in the daytime. A lot of tragedy, a lot of down trips. Uh, soap operas, most especially. Ladies don't even call them soap operas anymore. They call them my stories. <laughs> call me back, Agnes. My stories are coming on. And there are lots of stories. And they all have doctors in them. Man. Doctors in everything. Even if it's not about doctors, he'll be along. There's not much happiness in the daytime, even on the quiz shows, you know, where you'd expect to find an occasional winner and a little joy. They rarely have a winner anymore. They really don't get to play the games anymore. Damn rules take too long to explain. <laughs> By the time they get to the first question, the first question is, can you come back tomorrow? <laughs> We're out of time. You've heard the rules. 
Well, you know how we play our game, don't you? The champion, Mrs. Muck and Fuss, will get the first question. If she answers correctly, the challenger, Mrs. Fussmucker, will spin the big prize wheel to determine the champion's prize. If the wheel stops on a prize already won by the champion, she'll have to forfeit the prize and draw a number for a new category. If the wheel stops on a prize not yet won by our champion, she'll have a choice of either accepting the prize or taking a prize from the challenger's list, in which case the champion forfeits her turn and chooses the challenger's home partner from the revolving drum. <laughs> we'll call the challenger's home partner on the phone. We'll ask her 15 questions. If she can answer all of them correctly, she can select a number from 1 to 900. The champion will then spin the big prize wheel to determine the amount of money won by the challenger's home partner. Well, that's what happens if the champion answers correctly. If she answers incorrectly, she has to give us her firstborn male child. <laughs> well, it's only fair. Uh, those ladies don't risk anything, you know. I mean, they come to the studio empty-handed. And even the worst contestant of the month gets a copy of the home game. A little pat in the ass. Thank you, honey. God love you. <laughs> I'd like to see those ladies have to bring in their own furniture and bet it against the house, you know? <laughs> Give a little excitement. Okay, you've lost. Take it away, boys. Your living room. Okay. <laughs> Isn't she a good sport? <laughs> and then there's Let's Make a Deal, the seat of greed in America. You've seen the people on uh, Let's Make a Deal. You should see the ones they don't let on the show. <laughs> Take them away. Yeah, but you've got to be a little bit dingy, I think, to be 43 years old and standing up there dressed like a radish, you know? <laughs> and the ladies, God love them, they show that greed when Monty shows the money. Hi, I'm Monty Hall, and I have $500. Not me more, Monty. <laughs> okay, you have the $500. What would you like to do? Keep the $500, or do you want to buy what Jay has in this box? He's bringing down the aisle. Jay, you want to bring that box on down? Jay, look up at the court. Jay, look out, Jay. <laughs> Well, now we know what Jay had in the box. It was a cheese straightener. Deluxe model two. Okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep the cheese straightener or do you want the $500? Or do you want door number one, door number two, or door number three? Oh, Christ. Oh, Monty, Monty. What were the doors again? Door number two or door number three. Oh, wow. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. No, wait. Okay. Wait. Okay. All right. No, wait. Oh, wait. Monty, Monty, Monty. Door number one. Three, two, eight. No, wait. Hold on. Two. What? Wait. One or two. One. Three. One. Three. Wait. Wait. Okay. Wait. I didn't go yet. Definitely. Two, one, wait, three, wait, no. Okay, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a fella by the toe if you holler, you're out, Monty. <laughs> no. Okay, I got four. No, you don't have four. It's between two and one and three. Oh, and by the time she picks, it's anticlimactic, you know, and a little greedy. Yes, that's it. You've won a 1971 Ferrari. Oh, God, we have a small car. <laughs> It's 8 o'clock in Los Angeles. It's 9 o'clock in Denver. It's 10 o'clock in Chicago. In Baltimore, it's 6.42. <laughs> Time for the 11 o'clock report. First of all, the headlines. Welcome Wagon runs over newcomer. Good humor man slays 10. Pen pal stabs pal with pen. Pediatrician dies of childhood disease. And Jacques Cousteau drowns in bathtub accident. We'll be back with full details in just a moment after this word from Cooley's Cigarettes. You know something, Bill? These cigarettes of mine, they taste like crap. <laughs> Say, Dan. <laughs> Pr 
crappy taste. Why don't you try the cool, refreshing taste of Coolies? Coolies, eh? You smoke them? Nope, found them in the subway toilet. <laughs> And now back to the news. History's 135th heart transplant operation was performed yesterday in New York City. One unusual note, the heart transplant took place in Central Park at midnight, and the donor's family was not consulted. <laughs> Dr. Timothy Leary's brother, really Leary, today announced the formation of a new religion, which teaches that when you die, your soul goes to a garage in Buffalo. <laughs> Police today arrested Margaret Fulcrum, a 45-year-old unregistered nurse, and charged her with accepting collect obscene telephone calls. <laughs> Fame television announcer Charlie the Tuna was found dead today of mercury poisoning. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> Good news from the Far East. No one was killed in Vietnam today. However, three people died of old age at the Paris Peace Talks. <laughs> and former French President Charles de Gaulle rose from the dead today just to show everyone he could really do it. <laughs> well, that's it from the news desk for the latest in sports. Here's Biff Barf. Good evening, sport fans. Biff Barf here in the Biff Barf Sportlight Spotlight, picking them up and barfing them right back at you. I call them the way I see them, and if I don't see them, I make them up. No games today. However, we do have a few late football scores still coming in from the far west. Guam Prep, 45. Marshall Islands, 14. Mindanao A&M, 27. Molokai, 10. Caltech, 14.5. MIT, three to the fourth power. <laughs> William and Mary, six. Nick and Tony, 105. <laughs> and here's a partial score, Stanford, 29. Well, that's it, kids. <laughs> that's it from the scoreboard in the world of golf today in the Fats Domino Desert Classic. First round leader, Willie Water, has it, had a birdie, two eagles, and a duck this afternoon. <laughs> Meanwhile, the favorite Gary Fairway was way behind, scoring a record 609 strokes on the front nine when he accidentally stepped aboard a bus to Minneapolis while playing a difficult lie from the highway. Well, that's it, sport fans. Join me tomorrow afternoon on the ever-widening world of sports when I'll be presenting the national two-man pall-bearing championships. And next week, I'll be a guest hunter on American Sportsman. Six of us are going to kill a rabbit. <laughs> the latest in weather, here's Al Sleet, your hippy-dippy weatherman. Hey! Hey! Hey, hey Pasta! Hey, what you call your Pasta? Al Sleet, your hippy-dippy weatherman, brought to you by Parsons Pest Control. Do you have termites, water bugs, and roaches? Parsons will get rid of the termites and water bugs and help you smoke the roaches. <laughs> Present temperature is 68 degrees at the airport, which is stupid because I don't know anyone who lives at the airport. <laughs> Downtown, it's much hotter. Downtown's on fire, man. Now, if you'll take a look at our national weather map, you'll see that we don't have one. <laughs> So try to picture last night's map in your mind. Remember all those lines and numbers. Weather was dominated by a large Canadian low, which is not to be confused with a Mexican high. <laughs> Tonight's forecast, dark. <laughs> Continued mostly dark tonight turning to widely scattered light in the morning. <laughs> That's it from Al Sleet. Don't forget, if you don't like the weather, move. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Always a great report from Al Sleet. I think we all know by now, Al's been into the mushrooms. <laughs> well, that 
just about wraps it up on the 7 o'clock report. Join us again tomorrow night at 9 for the 11 o'clock news. In the meantime, stay tuned for a brand new comedy series, Double Trouble, the story of Siamese twins joined at the lips. And the merry mix-ups that occur when one gets married and the other has root canal work the same day. Good night, all. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you.